Weeks before Israel's 2009 elections, Operation Kaslet was launched. Over 1,400 Gazans, most of them civilians, were killed. Around 5,000 were injured. Enormous damage was caused and the scar of broken lives may never heal. Now, months ahead of another Israeli election, Kaslet 2 could become a reality. I'm Homa Lezgi and this is News Analysis. These three Palestinian kids are the latest victims of an Israeli airstrike on Gaza amid escalating attacks by the Israeli military. In the past several days, at least six Palestinians have been killed in such attacks and scores of others wounded. In retaliation, Palestinian fighters have fired rockets and mortars into Israel that have mostly hit open fields and left no injuries. The rising tensions come as the talk of a new war against Gaza has been dominant in Israeli media. Israeli officials are also warning Palestinians that they will pay a heavy price. It seems that a consensus has been reached among Israeli officials on a possible war on Gaza. Finance Minister Steinitz uh, is said to be leaning or favoring an operation similar to, to, to the 2002 invasion of Gaza. Uh, Shelly Yasimovich, uh, the Labour uh, Party leader, says that elections uh, make it difficult for, for an operation right now, but she said that an operation or a response is necessary. Uh, Kadima leader uh, Shaul Mofaz is, is reportedly favoring. Uh, targeted killings. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has already begun an international effort to gather support for another war against Gaza. On Monday, Netanyahu met with foreign ambassadors to convince the rest of the world that another invasion is acceptable. Netanyahu's stance is seen by many as a political maneuver ahead of Israel's general elections due in January. He seems to be trying to show that he is not a weak prime minister in order to win the vote. Uh, some analysts said before that Netanyahu might try to take advantage of the election of the of uh, of a strike against uh, Gaza in order to portray himself tough on security. Tel Aviv has already received Washington's green light for a full-scale invasion into Gaza. On his Facebook page, U.S. Ambassador to Israel Dan Shapiro says Israel has the right to attack the coastal strip. Israel's latest war on Gaza took place in late 2008 when at least 1,400 Palestinians were killed, most of them civilians. Well, joining me now live from Gaza is A.D. Mermak, human rights activist. Also with us live from Florida, historian and political commentator Mr. Daniel Pipes. And with us from London, peace activist and former U.S. Marine Kenneth O'Keefe. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being on this edition of News Analysis. My first question to our guest in Gaza. A.D., you're in Gaza. Give us a sense of the humanitarian situation there right now as we're hearing of Israel stepping up its attacks on the Strip and and, of course, threatening to wage another war on the besieged territory. <clears throat> well, there's, there is a lot of tension around and there's a lot of concern because what just happened here was virtually a massacre. There was an attack blatantly targeted against civilians. We were actually visiting the families yesterday. We went to the hospital. We visited the doctors. These were all civilians. There were four civilians that were killed, uh, two while they were playing football. 16- uh, and 17-year-old Mohammed Harada, Ahmed Harada. And then they, there was a gathering here. This was in Shejaiya in eastern Gaza, Gaza. And during the gathering, they then bombed the people that were gathering, uh, who were grieving the two children that had been killed. And Ahmed al Dirdisawi and Matar Abu al Atta were killed. Uh, then all together in that situation, it sounded... Uh, like a scene from the attacks on Gaza before that killed 332 children in three weeks uh, and 1,400 people. Uh, and uh, there were 38 injured altogether in the attack on Shejaiya, all civilians. This was a targeted attack against civilians. They decided mm. this. And, of course, the initial attack was on Thursday against a 13-year-old boy, Ahmed Abu Dhaka. 
and this was the first attack, the first casualty, and uh, he was a 13-year-old living by the border. These are crimes. These are already crimes, and they're already talking about an escalation of more mass crimes in the Gaza Strip. Mm. And, and this is where the people around the world have to act now. So that, is it going to be 1,400 killed next time? Is it going to be 2,000? Mm. Is it going to be 3,000? Is it going to be 500 kids? Which kids are going to die tomorrow because of these attacks? This is, a, this is, I, I yeah. really, this is a major concern now in Gaza mm. Strip, and it's a major concern for the world. Yeah, well, Benjamin Netanyahu, he's warned uh, that Israel is, quote, prepared to escalate uh, the, its response. And the, the Minister of Military Affairs, Ehud Barak, also said that Hamas will pay a heavy, heavy price. Now, I'd like to bring in Daniel Pipes now on this. Uh, Ms. Pipes, we're hearing the uh, Aidan Mermak telling us that already a massacre is taking place in Gaza. Uh, but how serious do you think these threats of an escalation are? Well, first of all, if we're going to say there's a massacre in Gaza, we also have to say there's a massacre on the Israeli side. There are people being killed on the Israeli side as well, and there are crimes happening on the Israeli side. So let's put aside the, the massacre question and let's look at what's happening. What we have is a situation where four years ago there was a war, and the war ended in January of 2009, and there's been a relative quiet. For various reasons, Hamas has decided to make this into a new war. Now, we can speculate as to the reasons. I can give you probably six different reasons why Hamas has decided to do this. But I think the Israeli position today is, look, Hamas, you better stop or else you will get another war. And I do very much hope that Hamas gets this message and seizes and desists and does not mm. continue this aggression against Israel so that there won't be another war. But it's up to Hamas. Uh, if it's quiet for quiet, if the Israelis have quiet, then yeah. Hamas and Gaza will have Gaza. Gaza will have quiet. But if not, then there will be war. And that's Hamas's decision. Right. Well, let's bring in Ken O'Keefe now from London. Uh, Ken, I guess they're in Florida saying that the situation now lies with Hamas making a decision that there was relative calm before this, but Hamas was the side that wanted uh, this war. And now it is the side that's going to decide whether there is going to be war. What do you think? Well, I can't even remember all the lies that were just said by... Uh Mr. Pipes in Florida. First off, there is no massacre in Israel. What massacre are you talking about? If we talk about the fourth largest military in the world, uh, which has the latest high-tech weapons going against a relatively defenseless population, which has nothing more than glorified fireworks in the form of these unguided rockets, which have killed less than 10 people over the last many years, how is it possible that this man can get away with saying that there is a massacre on the Israeli side? There is no massacre on the Israeli side. There is nothing but continuing crimes against humanity and war crimes committed by the Israelis against a defenseless population which includes over 800,000 children in Gaza. It is absolutely absurd that these arguments can continue and that a man like this can even speak these words. Absolutely disgraceful. Mm -hmm. The fact is that this all originates because of the original crime of the Palestinians' land being stolen by the Israelis, by the UN declaration which provided land to less than 15% of the population and then ultimately yeah. gifted Israel with a land that did not exist in their, in their, in their right. They have, no, they have no right to this land whatsoever. That is the original crime and it's because of that crime that we see a retaliation to this very day. Well, well back to Gaza now, Adi Murmuk. We're hearing the remarks being said there by our guests. As someone who's been in Gaza yourself, you're seeing uh, things on the ground there. What basically led to this situation of Israel saying that it's going to go ahead with a full-scale war if it has to? Who uh, should be termed as responsible for this? Or what were the conditions that led to this uh, situation? The conditions are quite clear. And there was, a, there was an attack by Israel. There was an initial attack. And, it, and again, they killed Ahmed Abu Dhaka. The response, of course, is these uh, homemade rockets that are fired that actually uh, have only killed about 30 people in 10 years. Now, these are, I don't uh, in, endorse killing anybody and no one should be murdered. But 30 people compared to the thousands and thousands of Palestinians that have been killed. Um, there were, in fact, there's been more killed uh, in one bomb uh, against the Samouni family and one family in the Operation Cast led, then all of the, the victims uh, in, in, in over the 10 years uh, from these rockets from the Palestinian side. Once again, if you look at the attacks in June, it was initiated by Israel. There was no, uh, nobody killed on the Israeli side, 20 Palestinians killed, about 70 injured. In March, initiated by Israel, the first attack. 
There was again 20 Palestinians killed, uh, and then nobody, in, nobody killed on the Israeli side. Again, 70 Palestinians injured. There have been 38 and 52 total Palestinian civilians injured uh, during these latest attacks. The only attack that hit anybody on the Israeli side was an Israeli jeep. And of course, uh, under international law even, the Palestinians have a right to defend against uh, a military occupation. And Palestine mm. is still under military occupation. It's the longest running uh, military occupation in modern history. And so these are, this is just fictitious nonsense. Not only has it happened again where Israel has initiated the attacks, Israel does probably want a war because they're always wanting to attack its neighbours around mm. them. They've invaded endless countries throughout their creation and they are also yeah. just about to embark on, a, on an election campaign. And of course, if they're at war, then it helps enormously to gain people support for that, right. especially we'll with the propaganda the like of, Daniel Pipes is pumping out. Yeah, right. We'll come to the question of why it is or it is not going to make that decision. But first, let's go back to Daniel Pipes. I'd like to get your reaction, uh, Ms. Pipes, to uh, the, uh, the remarks by a London guest. He said that there is no massacre in Israel. Uh, and also, Adi Mermak, they're telling us that there wasn't basically what, what you said, relative calm before this. But we have been seeing a large number of Palestinians being killed, but no casualties uh, for coming uh, from uh, the... Uh, attacks that have been launched by Hamas. Uh, and basically the question of all this stemming, as uh, Ken O'Keefe there said there, from the illegal occupation. Well, in the first place, I find it interesting that the other guests dismiss 10 or 30 Israeli deaths without any concern. You know, there are very few countries that would accept uh, rockets, mortars coming into their territory, killing people. Uh, and just say, well, that's fine. There have been 110 rockets since Saturday over the last three days uh, landing in Israel from Gaza. Can you imagine, say, in France, 110 rockets coming from Switzerland and saying, well, that's not a problem. We'll just ignore that. It's a huge problem. And uh, the, without going back to 1948 and the origins of the Arab Israeli conflict, we have a situation now where in recent years it has been reasonably quiet. And suddenly Hamas has decided to send 110 rockets. It has killed as many people as it could. Granted, they're not the most sophisticated rockets, but they're out to kill. And they have killed. And they will kill. And the question is, well, are they going to continue this? Are they going to stop? It's Hamas's decision to continue the attacks and provoke a war. Or it is Hamas's decision to end those attacks and not have a war. And one can hear all sorts of names and dates and history, but it comes down to a simple fact that Hamas has a decision. Now, I think Hamas is likely to continue with this, and I think there are many reasons for this. Mm. In the first place, Hamas has rivals in, in Gaza, and it feels you know, impelled to, to use force. Secondly, the negotiations possibly between the Palestinian Authority and Israel. Thirdly, the Egyptian government is talking about closing down the tunnels, and this is a way of distracting attention. Fourthly, there's mm. attention on Iran, and this is a way of distracting attention from that. And finally, uh, the U.S. elections have happened, and Israel's in worse standing with the United States, and so this is perhaps a time yeah. to attack Israel. But I very much hope that Hamas will desist. Mm. Okay, in London now, Ken O'Keefe, uh, of course you do have the right to g give your response to what was said there by a guest in Florida, but uh, after you do that, do you think that uh, the issue now that e Egypt does have a new government and Hamas has said that that provides for it a, quote, safety net because Mohamed Morsi is not going to tolerate a Gaza war similar to the Gaza war that we saw back in 2008 and 2009, is that going to change things this time round? Well, I, I would hope that Egypt does not dis dishonor itself as it did under Mubarak for 30 plus years, that's for sure. They're Muslim, they're Arab brothers and sisters in Palestine, and their Christian uh, brothers and sisters in Palestine deserve the uh, respect and the love and the loyalty that every, every single sane human being should be giving to the Palestinian people who have now been enduring for over six decades a criminal, psychopathic, racist, entity which has devoured and consumed every bit of land that it could and killed with impunity because of its protection from the United States and the EU. And I'd like to bring it back to the Western nations that provide cover 
to Israel because without the cover that our nations, Britain in particular and the US, without the cover that the EU and Western nations in general provide to Israel, they could not continue these crimes and they would be punished in any sane world. But again, our Western nations give them this cover. And ultimately, what this man is saying in Florida is just more nonsense, which conveniently forgets the fact that mm. it is the original crime that is being responded to here. And plus, we have five years now, over five years, of an illegal criminal collective punishment policy, which again affects over 800,000 children in Gaza. If it was your child that was being subjected to this type of collective punishment, I wonder if you would have the same type of views that you express towards the Palestinians. I believe that you suffer from the same disease that apparently pervades Western society, which imparts great value to Israeli life and imparts virtually no value to Palestinian, Arab, or Muslim life. It is a disgusting reality. It's a perverse reality of Western so-called civilization, and it shames all of us. And if you want me to say how I feel about those lives that are lost in Israel, I regret every single life lost in this world, especially when it comes down to the lies that allow propaganda for us to right. be involved in wars, incessant bogeyman instigated wars that are all nothing more than manipulations to keep the system of tyranny right. going. I but, regret all loss okay. of life. But right. I especially regret the loss of life of innocent people who are only resisting yeah. the unacceptable. Adi Mermak in Gaza. Now, we know the, that when the Gaza war happened back in 2008 and 2009, uh, various probes were made. Uh, and then even from the Israeli side, we saw an international probe concluding that uh, civilians were targeted, that excessive force was used. Uh, but uh, a lot of critics right now of a possible war are saying that uh, what they call the inaction of the international community when it came to the Gaza war is a provoking similar action now again by Israel. What can you tell us about the type of action that you expect from the international community? Well, sadly, um, what, what Ken has just said is, is, the, is the truth of the matter. They, they're, the reason why Israel may be able to uh, attack with, that, with more immunity is because of the cowardice uh, and the uh, complete and utter co-opting of all Western governments for the Israeli agenda of colonizing Palestinian land. Um, the, the settlements have increased to 600,000 now. They're all illegal by international law. Everybody's just sat and watched. The European Union has continued to fund Israel and America funds $3 billion to $6 billion a year for this criminal enterprise to take place. So uh, I don't expect too much from international governments, but I do hope that things have changed somewhat. Some Israelis are saying that soon Israel will be isolated because people on the ground are actually starting to wake up and starting to act. And civil society mm. is beginning to say we can't have anything to do with a country that is being perpetuated by an apartheid system against Palestinians mm. and has came about through ethnic cleansing. So uh, I do really hope that, that uh, there will be a response I, I, the United Nations had the, uh, the report, the Goldstone report, which did uh, say that Israel had committed crimes against humanity and uh, uh, war crimes. Um, mm. However, this was not acted upon, and this is why Israel will be able to commit more murder over the next few days. And I wonder which civilians now are sleeping in their beds or, having, or yeah. playing football or having dinner now who will tomorrow or the next day be losing their lives. This, mm. These are crimes initiated by Israel. And I'm, I'm disgusted that Daniel Pipes has not even uh, had any sense to, to give any time to the initial victims, the civilian victims that began every single, uh, of this cycle of, uh, every single cycle of violence that's happened, not to mention the cast lead attacks. CNN mm. even reported that Israel was the first to break the ceasefire that had been going on for three months, that started the round of violence that began the attacks that have always ended up with mass murder on the Palestinian side. Right, Daniel Pipes, uh, a lot said about how the international community is responding to uh, the Israeli actions. First of all, we've got the Gaza siege, which is uh, considered as crippling for, for the economy of civilians, is considered as collective punishment. We've got also the issue of settlements. We've even heard the United Nations in America pressing Israel to stop the illegal settlements. Catherine Ashton recently said that she was against them. And that, but the thing is, uh, there is the, those who are criticizing the international response 
response is saying there is not enough action. For instance, what happened to the allegations of war crimes, the use of phosphorus bombs, etc., uh, that were used during the Gaza war? What's your response? Well, we've heard a great deal about 1948, about Israeli towns in the West Bank, about various uh, ordinance. But the issue today is what's before us, that since Saturday there are 110 rockets that have been sent into Israel. It's not about a larger question, it's about that. Now, your other guests have called Israel uh, racist and psychopathic and criminal and so forth. It's a very interesting description of a country that is a modern liberal state, democratic, law-abiding. Of course, it has its problems. What country doesn't? What person doesn't? It's no angel. They make mistakes. They do wrong things. But in Gaza, you have a terrorist organization in charge, a full-fledged terrorist organization with a history going back over 20 years of terrorism that is uh, dedicated to mm. fulfilling a terrorist vow. And Hamas is the innocent, and Israel is a psychopathic, racist, criminal state. Something wrong with these people. They don't understand the world as it works. No, I, I, deal, I, I give an automatic uh, favor to the democratic state, to the law-abiding state, to the modern state. And that's what Israel is here. Okay. And I give very little mm. credence and very little uh, rope to a terrorist state, which is what Hamas and Gaza is. Okay, we're running out of time. I'd just like to get, get the reactions now. Ken O'Keefe, uh, I guess they're in Florida saying that Hamas is a terrorist entity uh, in uh, Gaza uh, and we're seeing Israel confronting a terrorist state. Uh, what's your response? More ridiculous statements from this man in Florida. Nelson Mandela was a terrorist of his day, so declared by Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan. The IRA, which resisted against British tyranny, were the terrorists of their day, many of which are now in government. And the founding fathers of the United States, I'm sure this man would have prostituted himself for the British Empire at the time, if he was on their side, and said that those that resisted the British tyranny were terrorists as well. This abuse of the word terrorism is thankfully in its dying days because the ultimate terrorist on this planet is the United States of America. For its one to two million dead in Iraq, millions of orphans, millions of refugees, an ongoing war in Afghanistan and Pakistan where we destroy the, the lives of civilians and children daily, how dare we in the West even think to point the finger at anyone else and call them a terrorist. Absolutely ridiculous and thank God that more and more people, especially young people, are seeing through these bogus arguments and seeing the truth for what it is. It's this man in Florida and the dupes who follow his logic that cannot see the world for what it is. And thankfully that day is dying. We will have justice in this world. Palestine will be free. Make no mistake about it. Kenneth O'Keefe, peace activist and former U.S. Marine, joining us there live from London. Thank you very much. I'd also like to thank our guest in Florida, historian and political commentator, Mr. Daniel Pipes, and also with us from Gaza, human rights activist, A.D. Murmuk. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being with News Analysis. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for now from Miho Malesgi and the rest of the team. Goodbye.